Welcome to everybody who's here with us today in person and those of you who are with us online. Today is Trinity Sunday, which is the name of our church. So it's a special Sunday for us. And at the end of worship, during our announcements, we'll have some updated news about what's going on with our building renovation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, God our provider, provider, help us. Help us. It, it is hard to believe, believe that there is enough to share. share. We, we question, question your, your ways, ways may differ from the ways, from the ways of, of the world in which, which we live. We turn, turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us to the life of the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
So. You appointed them rulers over everything you made. You placed them over all creation. Sheep and cattle and the wild animals too. The birds and the fish and the creatures in the seas. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you into all the truth. 
for she will not speak on her own, but will speak whatever she hears, and she will declare to you the things that are to come. She will glorify me, and because she will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, and for this reason I declare that God will take what is mine and declare it to you. Holy wisdom, holy word. So today I want to talk to you about something that's a little weird. I want to talk to you about Ludafisk. And Ludafisk, for those of you fortunate enough to have no clue what I'm talking about, is a dish from Norway, Sweden, Finland, and it is a dried white fish, usually cod, that is rehydrated over a week with a mixture of water and lye, lye being a major ingredient in soap making. After this rehydration, the fish is so dangerous to eat, it must be soaked additionally in clean water for another week before it is then cooked in a microwave. The end result is a jello-like, flavorless fish with half the protein it originally had. And then the only way you can really eat it is to either smother it in melted butter or a equally flavorless white gravy. The culture I grew up, the region I grew up, this is a controversial but well-loved dish. People love it so much they drive hours to go to special Ludafisk dinners. <laughs> and our regional church body advertises these dinners in the Synod Weekly Update. Now, I've looked this up. No one can explain why we still eat this food today. Back when it first came into being, it was a good way of preserving food for the long, cold, harsh winter months of northern Scandinavia. But with modern technology like refrigeration and more controlled climates for our food and increased ways to preserve our food long past the harvest, we can't figure out why we still eat it. And even the people who love it can't really give a good explanation of why it's still eaten. So I've been given the tagline, Ludafisk, the piece of cod that passes all understanding. My mind has been stuck on Ludafisk this week because today is Holy Trinity Sunday the day when the church celebrates God being triune, or three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God, co-eternal and ever-present. My mind has been stuck on Ludafisk because the Holy Trinity is the peace of God that passes all understanding. The Trinity is a central tenet of Christian faith, and it's one of the most difficult concepts to grasp and one that is impossible to explain in its entirety. In fact, Martin Luther, after whom the Lutheran Church is named, said to deny the Trinity endangers your salvation, but to comprehend the Trinity endangers your sanity. This is a strange concept to hold a belief that is beyond our understanding, something that we cannot put into concrete words that describes God in the way that we find satisfactory 
or in a way that actually explains the entirety and the expansiveness of God. In today's world, it's weird and strange and scary to admit that this is something we do not know and that we do not have the ability to fully understand. Because in today's world, there's always this desire to know more. There are studies being conducted, there are books to be read, there are people to listen to who can teach us all about what we do not know. Through this desire for more knowledge, we have done great things. We have figured out so much of our world and lives. We have discovered things we never thought were possible. I myself in a short time have gone from having to not be on the internet because my mom needs to make a phone call and ask my mom to get off the phone because I need to do some research for my school paper to suddenly being able to make a phone call and search the internet at the same time with a device held in my hand. We have discovered how to transport people through the air. We have landed on the moon. We are taking more and more steps towards equality for all. We finally know how anesthesia works. And we potentially have a cure for cancer. Yet there's not a single human on earth who can comprehend the full nature of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Try as we might and we have over centuries and millennia, every metaphor, every attempt to explain the full nature of God has and always will fall short. And as scary as that is, there is so much beauty in living in to this mystery of God. It is in this mystery of God that we have encountered the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in ways and places we never would have imagined. It is in the unknown where Moses encountered the burning bush and heard the call from God to go and free his people from slavery. It is along the rivers of Babylon that people exiled from their homeland cried out to God and met comfort and learned. It is in the feeding trough of animals that Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise people and the barn animals themselves encountered God incarnate, human, and lying in the manger as a newborn babe. Just last week, we talked about how the apostles encountered the Spirit through a rush of wind and tongues of fire, enabling them to not only encounter the Spirit, encounter God, but to be able to bring that encounter to those who are not expecting to find God and see that miracle on a festival day. It is in this uncertainty that we learn and experience the expansiveness of God. We have been shown the mystery of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit throughout history. I've shared a little bit about how those encounters have been passed down through the stories of the Bible. Hundreds and hundreds of chapters and accounts of how God has shown up as the one who guides, as the one who walks beside, and the one who convicts inside us. But the stories in the Bible are not the only stories of the Trinity in action. Because when we allow ourselves to live into the mystery of God, we see and know and can share the ways that God has worked outside of our knowledge. We have seen 
the works of God through people we might not have expected and have seen people live in to the will of God, the work of God in ways that they were not expecting. People like Martin Luther King Jr., who as a Southern Baptist pastor, I don't imagine start his ministry thinking he would be speaking and preaching equality to thousands of people on the mall in the nation's capital. People like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who during World War II saw what was happening and felt his call to speak against it. Going against the very teachings and beliefs that a lot of his colleagues and the church around him held at that point. People like Mr. Rogers, whose beloved neighborhood brought up and taught so many children within the U.S. Mr. Rogers was a Presbyterian pastor who never served in a church. He saw and had the call from the Spirit to bring the experience of the Trinity of God to people all across the nation in this new medium of television to allow people to encounter God that no one thought was possible just five, 10 years before he started. And we could go on. Bishop Desmond Tutu, Marsha P. Johnson, who is one of the people who helped bring about pride and the LGBTQ equal rights movement, who has helped bring so many more things happen. All of these things that the people I named achieved were things that one point weren't believed were possible, that was outside our realm of knowledge and understanding. They helped us live into the fullness of God, into the mystery of God, to encounter God in a variety of ways. And it's possible by living into the knowledge that we don't have all the answers. But that doesn't mean that we are left alone. In this void of knowledge, in this uncertainty, in this sometimes confusion of trying to explain how three persons can be one God and one God can be three persons and they're not the same, but they cannot be separated from each other. It allows us to be in a place where we don't have the answers, but the possibilities are all around us. And the great thing, the thing that Jesus assures us of today is that we are invited into this odd-filled life with the Trinity that these answers that can feel like a burden when we have so many things in the world that weigh us down. Issues with people being unhoused, with not having enough food, people who worry about their rights being taken away and having to fight to be seen as fully as the person next to them. All these answers are not ours to burden alone. Because the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God who guides, the God who walks beside, and the God who convicts from within, that God is the one who knows what has happened in the past, what is happening now, and what will happen in the future that God is the one who has the answers, who is working within each and every person, who is working within you. To be with you when you're unsure, to guide you when you don't know the next steps. 
to see the world in a fresh way, in a creative way that will allow you to live not only more fully with the person next to you or the person you have not yet met, but with the God who has created you in great love and care. And so today, as we think about the Trinity, this mystery, this peace of God, that it passes all understanding. This God calls you to go, to be open to the mystery of God in whatever way God reveals God's self to you. To be open to the guidance of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And be assured that when not knowing what comes next, when not knowing the answers feels a little bit too scary, that God has, is, and will be there with you. And that through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so much, which is now maybe a little bit too hard to imagine, is absolutely possible. And for that, I give thanks to the one who is and was and is to come, the three in one and the one in three, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers this morning uh, come to us from Emily in Switzerland, who was
not able to be here on the screen, but she sent the prayers for us. Let us pray. Dear God, on this Trinity Sunday, thank you for entrusting our Trinity to us. Thank you for the people that we care for and who care for us. And thank you for your steadfastness as we care for our building. Thank you for everything miraculous and strange that we have inherited. God, in your mercy. Dear God, help us to discern calls to action from scapegoating. Help us to discern threats to creation from threats to our egos. Help us to discern ways we are helping from ways we are salting the wounds. God, in your mercy. Dear God, spare us from the tragic pain of the world. We know that this is an impossible request and we don't want to be numb or indifferent to the true grievances. But in the face of so much tragic pain, we like the idea of asking it to stop. You can meet us in the middle. We'll accept a compromise. God, in your mercy. Dear God, thank you for sunlight and for green and for warm nights and for the month of June in general. Thank you for the tender things in the world and the beautiful surprises. Help us to care for the parts of creation that we're neglecting on our own and help us with the things that aren't our fault, but we want to do better with anyway. God, in your mercy, your part. for whom else and what else shall we pray? God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Adam van der Tuig and for Sharon Wilson that they may know your healing mercies. God, in your mercy. Hear our Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. This is the time for our offering. For those of you who are here and would like to give a physical offering, there is a purple box to the left of the doors as you leave. Uh, for those who would like to give electronically, there is a QR code on page six. And if you're online, it's also in the comment section. We are Thankful for all the offerings that allow us to be in ministry in this place as Trinity Lutheran Church. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Oh. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to your table with gifts of heart and hand. Fill us with your love so that our lives may bear the fruit of your word. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, even to be adored, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now remembering Jesus and all he did, we are bold to sing the mystery of faith. Let us join in praying a prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day to forgive our bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. At this time, I invite those who are communing with us at home to take your bread and hear the words of Jesus. This is my body given for you. And take your cup and hear the words of Jesus. This is my blood shed for you. At this time, everybody here in person is invited to communion. The silver tray has grape juice and the brass tray has wine.
May God bless us and keep us. Gracious to us. Please be seated for a few announcements. Uh, first, uh, June. Every Sunday in June has been uh, somewhat of a special occasion. Last week was Pentecost. This week is Trinity Sunday. Next week uh, is June 19th, which is both Father's Day and it's also Juneteenth. Um, and we will be um, celebrating Juneteenth um, after worship. Mark Harding, uh, Professor Mark Harding, um, will be giving a talk about the history of Juneteenth and what it means for us today. So I, I hope that many will come and um, Mark is always very interesting and informative and he'll be with us next Sunday. Um, and the Sunday after that, we'll celebrate Pride Sunday. Um, we have a huge amount of food today. Um, so uh, we were talking about, well, it's Trinity Sunday. Just last week, we were talking in the garden, you know, we should do something special. We should have a meal on Trinity Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, but everybody brought food for Pentecost. Um, well, yesterday, somebody, um, they had their birthday and they had so much leftover food from Malecon, fried chicken, pernil, rice, salad. Um, so we're not really set up for it. We need some help um, after church to put a table, maybe just outside in front of the church quickly, bring out the trays of food, find utensils. Um, honestly, we don't have, I don't think we have plates, but we'll figure something out. Um, anyway, also, you could take food home. This food should be eaten within the next couple of days. Um, the shelter's already eaten some of it. Um, the last part of these announcements, announcements, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. July is coming quickly for people to um, volunteer one Wednesday evening in July for our um, summer meals and children's um, Wednesday camp, I guess we can call it. So you just, if you could just give one Wednesday evening, uh, please sign up so we can um, start figuring that out. Uh, Vicar Elise has a special guest to, in, to uh, introduce to us. Yeah, so today we have my mom, Dela, uh, who is visiting from Wisconsin. So, Yay. Do we have any birthdays? No. No, we're not going to. We usually at this point would sing the final hymn, but we're not singing the final hymn. Uh, we had offerings, but uh, this is also an offering time where we're going to get an update on the stewardship um, of, of this place uh, where we worship. Um, a sanctuary upstairs and also a sanctuary downstairs, which is a shelter. Um, and offers many other kinds of sanctuary. And Clyde and 
Brad are going to um, briefly share about that, our progress. Um, and also, if you have questions for them, we'll, th you can talk to them after the closing hymn. So Clyde and then Brad. So I'll talk about uh, more of the financial aspects and Brad will talk about the actual uh, physical um, work that's going on in the church. So I'll, I'll start by just giving a, an overview of, of what the campaign is all about and what happened last year, and then talk about what has happened this year and what will remain to uh, be done in the campaign this year. So the overall overview is that um, we call it, or <laughs> Pastor Heidi um, had the good phrase, space for grace, that is doing what has to be done with this space so that Trinity can, can continue to do all the great things that it's doing in the community, um, our local community and more broadly, and to be able to do all the work that has been envisioned, um, the goal was $2 million um, for all of the full scope of work um, that, that could possibly be done uh, to get us to where our uh, most perfection. Um, given that, that ambitious goal, um, there are three key points about the overall approach to the um, raising money. One was that clearly it had to be from multiple sources. We couldn't raise that much money just from shelter donors or church donors. We really have to expand beyond that to then really focus on bringing in new donors, both individuals with potential deep pockets and also institutions. So that's one of the, the, the first major aspect of the campaign. Also, the campaign will take multiple years. It's planned to be a three-year campaign, both to give time for people to um, pledge and give on repeated cycles and also time to identify and cultivate some of these new donors who we can't just ask up front who may not be familiar, but time to really identify and cultivate them to be able to get them to also donate. donate. And then um, to really engage and use a professional fundraising group called LAPA, both because they have the resources and the administration, uh, administrative ability to actually run the campaign, the mailings, things like that, and also based on their previous experience, they have the donor list, potential donor list of some of those deep pockets that we could start cultivating. So those are sort of the three key aspects of the campaign overall. Um, so think, looking back again, summarizing what happened in 2021, the first year, um, it really was to, um, to have a broad campaign, our first annual appeal, which went out to both you church um, supporters and also shelter supporters and also expand the, the grant um, fundraising activities. The results of those, um, those efforts in 2021, the goal was to raise $433,000. We actually exceeded that. The campaign raised $441,000 in 2021. So, so now I'll just turn to what has happened so far in 2022 and also of what you can anticipate happening for the rest of the year. The focus so far for this year has really been preparing for the appeals, not primarily reaching out to ask for more money, but putting in place all the, all the uh, process, the identifying who will be, will be appealing to, so that when it does go out, that is coordinated, is um, cohesive, et cetera. Um, so we have, though, been continuing to collect on the 2021 pledges, those people who have pledged money but had not actually given the money yet by the end of the year. Um, and those that has raised another $60,000 um, from church and shelter supporters who have fulfilled their pledge this year that they actually made last year. Um, also, as Joy mentioned in the annual meeting, that um, there also was a loan taken out to continue to be able to do the physical work as the money comes in or in anticipation of the money coming in from the campaigns. Um, uh, that's one major aspect of what's been going on so far this year, sort of behind the scenes. Um, we also have been working, to, as I said, to identify some of those major new fund sources, both individuals and institutions, those deep pockets that we can start cultivating and reaching out to. Um, in terms of now actually reaching out, there are two major appeals planned. The first one is a mid-year appeal, which is really going to the shelter supporters, and it's this month to coincide with Pride Month. And so that already is queued up, and those um, those notices, those asks should be going out to those shelter supporters, I believe, this coming week, and then the follow-up. So for you who are hearing who are hearing me now, 
don't be surprised or don't be concerned if you don't get that appeal, because again, that's focused on shelter supporters, not church supporters. But just so you aware that that is happening. Um, for you church supporters, there will be a further appeal targeted fall winter of this year. So there will be a further appeal that goes out to church supporters and also will go out to shelter supporters and some of those new uh, potential supporters that we have identified and will continue to identify. So overall, two major appeals going out to different audiences. There also has been further grant fundraising, about $35,000 has been raised from grants this year and more anticipated as the year goes on. And then finally, um, um, Pastor Heidi has noted that part of what we want to do also is, as part of all of this, is enhance our digital profile and communications. And she has um, sent out and asked for volunteers from volunteers for digital communications coordinators for the church. When I... um, uh, yes, we, we have the volunteers that we need for that. Oh, great. Okay. So that's exciting. Okay. Well, thanks. Congratulations. Okay. Yes. So I'll just send just, again, that's quite a bit of information in a short period of time. So just to summarize what I think are the three key points, three key takeaways is that one, there's been a lot of work going on in the background that, you know, you may not know about, but it has been continuing to, um, again, to, to move us forward in raising the money that supports the physical work going on in the church. Um, second, there will be an ask coming to church supporters um, later in the year, so you can anticipate that. But um, you don't have to wait for that ask. If you already have made a pledge and you haven't fulfilled the pledge, you should feel free to go ahead and fulfill that pledge. Um, or if you feel inspired to anticipate the ask and make a new pledge or a new donation, you don't have to wait for the next mailing to feel free to go ahead and continue to the campaign. So I'd say those are the key points. Um, thanks very much, everyone. Great, thanks, Clyde, and uh, thanks to you for the hard work in raising the money and everybody else. It's you know it's a huge team that has worked on raising this money, and here my team is to spend the money. So and it seems like we're spending it all in the building and. It's really um, a lot of work that this building needs. And I mean, you can look around and see that, you know, just looking in here, there's a lot that we would love to do, but we can't really attack this until we get the building safe and dry. And that's the two things that we're um, focusing on mainly on the outside of the building and, and the facade. Everybody wants to know when the scaffolding is going to come down. We were hoping it would be down about this time. Well, it's running a little bit behind. So hopefully by the fall, it's going to be down. And, Maybe in September, we can have a grand opening for this project and the Undercroft project. I'm happy to say that that project's right on budget, um, although if it's going to run to September, you never know what's going to come up. So I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to be uh, right at budget on that project. Um, so you can be praying for that. The Undercroft project's another. The shelter received a $250,000 grant to, to do that. We've been working on that for like five years, and we finally got that kicked off this year or last year, and it was supposed to be finished in January. Well, obviously, it's still not finished, um, and we are um, way over budget um, on that one. So be praying that we can finish that up quickly. We're hopeful that by the end of this month that uh, we can start moving in. So um, if there's volunteers who want to help us move the stuff down from the lobby and uh, if we've got to bring all the stuff back from storage, we're going to need a big army to help bring all that stuff back into the building and onto the new shelves and on the new, new places. And then later in the summer, uh, Dan and I are going to attack this uh, where the windows used to be stored, with the windows we sold, which brought us some more money that we needed to, to use. Um, but we've got that closet. We're going to build some new cabinets and a work table to use for all the projects. So it's a very busy team, and there's always more to do. So if anybody wants to volunteer to be part of this team, please grab me after church or call me, email me, anything. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me after service, and I'll be around. Thanks.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. So we need help with the food. 